Hey lovelies, it's Ebony and I'm back with another video for you. As you can see, my hair is braided once again and this is my first DIY braiding tutorial. So I'm very excited to show you guys what I did, tell you the products I use and all that good stuff because I really like how my hair turned out. I was a little bit, well actually a lot. <laughs> I was very intimidated before doing this style, but I was like, no, Ebony, just push through, just try it, you might like it. I'm so happy I did. Um, so if you wanna see what I did to get this look and what products I use, keep on watching. Now, the reason I decided to braid my hair is because I'm going on vacation um, next week to Florida, and I wanted to make sure you know, my hair was taken care of, just like with the cruise. I wanted to just relax and be okay if it rained or if I wanna get into the water. I just didn't want to be bothered with my hair because it's a lot of work and, and when I'm on vacation I like to spend my time doing things other than my hair because it takes quite a while to do. So I decided instead of getting the same braids that I got before I would do something a little different. Get some jumbo braids in here because I was going to be doing them myself. There was no, 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 no way I was about to. <laughs> try to braid my hair with all those little individual braids like no that wasn't about to happen so I looked up a lot of videos on YouTube and decided I would do you know some jumbo braids and go with that now when I went into the beauty supply store I was all set on getting the expressions hair that everyone gets when they uh, get their hair braided but they only had um and I didn't find this out until I got to the register <laughs> that the only option they had as far as that goes uh, it was like $5 a pack. So I was like, I'm not spending $5 a pack for, uh, you know, connect line hair when there's much cheaper options in here. So I kindly put my eight packs of hair back <laughs> and grabbed something a little bit more budget friendly. And that is the Q, it was a Q6X Jumbo Braid. So with all that being said, I will start by telling you what I did to get my hair ready for braiding. Now, of course, I had to take out the previous braids that I had. I literally took them out. I took them out a couple of days ago. The very next day, I washed my hair for obvious reasons. And surprisingly, my hair wasn't all that dirty. It was pretty, like, I don't say tangled, but a lot of shed hair did come out because, you know, my hair hadn't been combed in such a long time. But as far as, like, dandruff or just all around dirt, it wasn't that bad. I had had those braids in for about three and a half weeks, almost. I washed my hair, and when I wash my hair, I like to use two different shampoos because my scalp just seems to need a little bit more attention than my actual hair strands. So for my hair strands, I use Biol Organics Mongongo Oil, I hope I'm saying that right, exfoliating shampoo. I like this shampoo, I've used it a few times. I feel like it's a really good product. It doesn't leave my hair squeaky, squeaky clean in that bad way, but I do feel like my hair is nice and clean. Still has a little bit of slip to it. And for my scalp, I decided I would use the Head & Shoulders 2-in-1 Instant Relief. This has peppermint complex and tea tree essence inside. I don't know what complex and essence means. I feel like that's just a cheap way of saying tea tree and peppermint oil adjacent or something like it, but whatever. It helps my scalp um, as far as like the dandruff and the dryness and itchiness because my scalp can turn on me rather quickly, especially after I've applied some type of heat to it, whether it be just a blow dryer or blow dryer and flat ironing. So it's just, you know, I think my hair just misses that constant moisture of when I wear my hair curly. So that shampoo helps with that. So in order to achieve what I need to achieve as far as washing my hair, I take the Bioorganics shampoo first, make all the, or scrub the, or wash <laughs> my actual strands, just, you know, from here on down. Before I rinse that shampoo out, I will take some head and shoulders and then just focus on my scalp. When it's all washed and scrubbed, I will then stand under the shower and let it all run down all at once. I thought about filming that part, but that would have just been too much and it's really just me washing my hair and you guys have seen me do that a million times. So yeah, just my other hand is first down here, head and shoulders up top, rinse it all at once and we're good to go. Now, for conditioner, I completely forgot. I forgot about deep conditioning. I think at this point, I was just tired. I had been dealing with my hair for quite a long time in the shower at this point, and I just forgot about it. So, because I forgot about it, I went ahead and blow dried my hair without adding anything in it except for this Tresemme Heat Tamer Heat Protectant, which, you know, is always a must when you're applying any type of heat to your hair. Use a heat protectant, please. Um, I realized, you know, shoot, I forgot to put any conditioner in it. 
So I decided that I didn't want to use leave-in conditioner because I don't have a leave-in conditioner, like a creamy one that I really like at this, at this time. And I wanted a creamy one because a wet one would just kind of like make my hair curl right back up again. Um, so instead I used a moisturizing curl milk. I decided to use the Camille Rose Naturals Curl Love Moisture Milk. This stuff is very moisturizing. I got this a long time ago. It's been sitting in my cabinet for like, I can't even tell you how long. Anyways, it's very, very moisturizing. It smells just like cake batter. And I actually thought that would be a better alternative than just putting in like a leave-in conditioner anyway, because it's strictly for moisturizing. You know, like leave-in conditioners do have that effect, but if I had to choose, like honestly, what I would prefer to have in my hair, if I had to choose between a leave-in or just an actual moisturizing cream. I would use moisturizing cream. Now once I had my hair nice and moisturized, I divided my hair into sections so that I could go ahead and put the rubber bands in. Now I have a very important tip to give you guys as far as these rubber bands are concerned. You don't want to use the matte black, you know, rubber bands like these kind. Like these will pull your hair out. It'll break your hair. It creates a lot of friction when it rubs against your hair. So you don't want to use those rubber bands. I instead use these plastic uh, clear rubber bands from Annie. I got these from the beauty supply store. I wasn't particular about a brand or anything. I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't rubber. I wanted to use something plastic, something that when it rubbed against my hair, it wouldn't cause the hair to rub against it, wrap against it, and then eventually pull it out. And this is exactly what these rubber bands did not do. They slid out of my hair very easily. I was able to manipulate them with no problem. The only complaint I do have is that they break kind of easily. Like, I guess if you wrap it around so many times, <laughs> because they aren't 100% rubber, it stretches to capacity and it just snaps. Um, but they stretch pretty far. I mean, I really didn't understand that. So you might want to double up per section if you feel like you want to put them in a little bit tighter, but I just replaced the ones that broke before um, I've added the hair in. If they start breaking underneath the hair, then oh well. <laughs> now so that you guys can see what my parts look like, I'm gonna go ahead and turn around. Let me raise this up a little bit. Right. So the first part I made, which actually took the longest, was this part here, the one from ear to ear. I just split it into three sections because that's what the girl in the video did. <laughs> but um, but yeah, this was the hardest one to make. I don't know why, but it just took me a very long time. And then, oh, before I move on to the next section, as you can see, like I made sure to space the parts, like I don't line the middle parts up. Well, I don't line the parts up, you know, one part here, one part there, because if you did, you just have rows of braids, you wouldn't have any fullness. You kind of wanted to fall in between. So I just continued that same pattern all the way up. Now as you can see, all the way up. And then the top part was just the part that I made from ear to ear. Oops, is this go here? No. Yeah, the top part where I parted my hair in half was just ear to ear straight across. I think this is the part, I'm hoping this is right. I can't really tell, but you guys, kind of get the idea. So I have 21 braids total, which is pretty much what I was shooting for. I wanted like between 18 and 20, but 21 is cool. Now you can obviously do this a bunch of different ways. You can section the hair, put the rubber band in it, and then put the hair in. I feel like if you try and do one full braid, like each time, like one part, one rubber band, one braid, then move on. Like it takes a long, long time. <laughs> I don't know, it seemed to go a little bit quicker when I decided to do, do it in batches. Now, in order to get the section ready for the hair, I obviously parted it, but before I put the rubber band in, I made sure to put that moisturizing milk on each section, and I decided to use edge control to keep the ponytail in place. It just makes it neater and more sleek, and I feel like it just adds to just the overall look and of like sharpness and richness that this style can have when your hair is nice and moisturized and nice and neat. The edge controller that I used was the Cream of Nature Pure Honey Edge Control. And you can use any edge control. Cream of Nature, Cantu, Olive Oil, whatever you have on deck. Uh, whatever you like most for your hair. Just make sure you have enough of it. I use one full container and then like not even half of another. As far as braiding the hair, just to show you guys what I did, I'm gonna go ahead and take one of these braids out so I can show you. I needed to do this anyway because if you can't, Tell, like you see how it's a little bit off 
like I think I pulled it just a little bit too far left with these now that's another thing I wanted to mention to you guys too when you're putting the rubber band in your hair make sure that you're placing the rubber band somewhat in the middle of the square that you create with the part because if you put it too far to the left or too far to the right or too far down low it won't look the way you want it to unless you just want all the you know just make sure it matches like if you want all your rubber band to be at the bottom of the box or the square then cool just make sure that the rest of them are like that but for the ones up top i wanted it to be just a little bit closer and i didn't realize that until after i had already done one whole side so i needed to take this out anyway so i'm gonna do this really quick and that way i can show you guys exactly what i did now as far as how long it took me to do this style i don't even want to talk about it y'all washing my hair blow drying it was the easy part but i think it was just you know trial and error never having done this before. It just added to the amount of time it took me to do my hair and it was just crazy, crazy long. It took me at least like, I don't know. It took a long time to get the parts straight. That's really what ate up a lot of the time was getting those parts together and nice and neat because I'm a perfectionist when it comes to that. Let me take this little hand out. See, just broke. I've already put edge control on this section, but I'm gonna show you guys anyway exactly what I did to get my hair ready. Aside from adding more moisturizing cream, I mean, you guys can figure that part out easily. Just put whatever amount feels right on each section to get it moisturized, and then just take a little bit of edge control. You know, just kind of you know dip your finger in it, rub it around. You don't have to cake it on, but just kind of put it around the base of the ponytail the little teeny tiny ponytail and then take a rubber band and if you're going to use this brand just be careful don't stretch too too much just put it right in the center now when putting rubber bands in my hair i kind of like to anchor the hair through my thumb my fingers to keep it from dragging against other loose hairs because when, obviously when I was doing this you know my hair was out so I wasn't done but you see how I keep the hair in my hand as I'm pulling it through that way it doesn't just drag against any other loose hairs and it creates that tangled mess that just ugh, so annoying so just keep it in your hand the whole time don't let it go like I just did right there <laughs> Keep it in your hand. Now, see that's kind of like in the middle. And now you're ready to add the hair. Now before adding the hair to my hair, I'm gonna show you how much hair I actually would use from each pack. It wasn't like, oh, I used half a pack or a third of a pack or whatever. I just used whatever felt right in my hand. And that took a little bit of time too because I just didn't know like how much was too much. Is this is gonna be enough. This is actually a good amount right here. You can kind of see like maybe two inches or so in width, nice thickness. And even this, I might take a little bit off, put a little bit of it back. It just has a feel to it. And the more you put the braids in your hair and actually braid it to see the thickness, the more you'll be able to tell, okay, this is too much, this is not enough. So when I take it out of the pack, I just go ahead and take my tangle teaser and um, brush it, making sure that I'm holding it nice and tight in the center. I'll just stand up and do this. Nice and tight in the center here so that not too many of the loose hairs come out. And as you can see, starting to like go crazy already. See, this might be the the difference in price. Maybe the expression is premium pack of one for five dollars, you know. <laughs> Maybe they didn't come out as easily. But anyways, see look at all this. But while I'm still holding it, I will take the ends of it like this. So you see how they're all kind of pretty much lined up? That's not what you want. Because if you leave it like that and try and braid it, you're gonna need to put a rubber band at the end. And unless you're okay with that, then that's not gonna work. I like to make it taper so that I can break all the way to the end and have, you know, a nice sleeker, a much sleeker finish or as sleek as I can get it. So I just take it and just pull, like take my fingers just like this and just pull in random places until I can no longer see that blunt 
line. It all just looks like real hair. So you wanna tease that as much as you can. And the Tangle Teaser actually kind of helps with that somehow. I'm not exactly sure how or why it does, but it just does. So yeah, just pull it until it all looks paper and you can no longer see that blunt, dark line in the middle that comes from the evenness of the hair. And it's okay if you get longer pieces than others because you're gonna trim it at the end anyway. And when you bring it together like that, it should have kind of like a tapered look there. So it looks more like natural tapered hair. So just imagine doing this for each section. See, I should have did this the night before. I should have prepped all the hair, did it the night before, but I just didn't know how much per section I was gonna need. And I didn't wanna just go through all that only to have to re-section it all anyway, but I still could have at least teased it. So that's actually something you might wanna Think about doing to save you time so you can just kind of zoom through putting the braids in because once you get the hang of that, it goes much faster. Okay, y'all, my arm is getting tired, but this is pretty much <laughs> the idea. You can see that it's tapered. It's not perfect, but it's enough to where you can easily braid it down. I know this is synthetic hair, but I still like to put a little bit of product in it just to make sure that the part touching my hair is gonna not just absorb whatever oils in my hair. I like to kind of counteract that with putting some product in and brushing it through so that while it's wrapped and braided up with my own hair, my hair can kind of feed off of the product that I put onto the synthetic hair. And I think it just adds to the sleekness and the richness of this look. So you don't have to use a whole, whole lot, but just some to kind of get it under control. And then you just brush it again. Now you're ready put it in your hair. So this is what a prepared section looks like, at least for me. I know it's not perfect. I might have so many people telling me, girl, what are you doing? But this is what worked. I mean, I don't think it should be that complicated, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab that piece that was already in my hair because it's already prepared and easy to just put in. I'm gonna take it and hold it just like this. I can't braid like this because then it forces you to braid outward like that and I just, it's not easy for me. So I like to do it like this. Put it right up against the hair. Wrap it underneath. Grab it, just like I'm about to braid any other, braid my hair just like any other time. And just grab it. I like to use my actual hair as the third strand. I know sometimes people like to borrow hair, like synthetic hair to their real hair to get the three strands right away. But I found it to be much more complicated and harder to do, especially in the back. So I'm just like, why don't I just use my real hair as the third strand? It's long enough, it's easy, and it'll save me some time. Now, as I'm braiding downward, I decided that I would take just a little bit more edge control just to kind of keep things in line. Just kind of rub it, keep it moving for a few more for uh, stitches or whatever. <laughs> and then add a little bit more edge control. That's too much edge control. Now, if you don't want to use edge control, you could probably just use more moisturizing cream whatever feels comfortable to you. Edge control works nicely for me, so that's just what I continue to use for every section. Now, I'm gonna get this question again. Ebony, your hair is long enough. Why are you adding hair? And it's because I want it to last longer. My hair can definitely stay on its own, I guess, as far as jumbo braids go, but they get frizzy too fast, and I don't wanna deal with that. 
All right, see how this is, this is my hair right here. And it's starting to get shorter. So now what I will do is borrow from this strand. I guess it got it closer to the center. <laughs> I'm not gonna concern myself too much with that. But hopefully that was nice and easy for you guys to understand. Now as far as the ends, did I dip my ends? I definitely did. And for that, I just got a pot of water. I saw it start to bubble. It wasn't a full on rolling bowl, but it was starting to bubble. So I turned it off, put it inside of a mug and dipped my ends. And I only dipped it till about this much. Yeah, this much because I was afraid, like I think my hair is somewhere up here, but in my mind it was like, what if it's down here? I didn't want to dip my actual hair into the really hot water. So I just dipped it about this much, enough to where, you know, it was saturated. I'd only did it for not even a minute. It maybe like 20 seconds, 30 seconds. I just did it to the point to where I felt like it was nice and saturated. And when I took it out, took some paper towels and just blotted it uh, carefully because the water is still really very, very hot. So make sure you double up on the paper towels and I just let it air dry before I went to bed. Now, if you're gonna do that, make sure you let your hair hang because any bend or curl or whatever is gonna permanently leave it in that shape. So if you decide you're gonna wet it and you're, you know, put it in a bun or whatever, just be aware that those ends might have a slight bend to it and it's gonna be like that for the entire time that you have the hair or until you rebraid it or put more hot water on it. <laughs> so I guess it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you guys could easily understand. Obviously, I'm not a pro at this. I just wanna show you guys what I did. Yes, I'll definitely put a link to the actual person that I watched 100 times before I did this style. And hopefully she will be a big help to you if you wanna do this style as well. Give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Share this video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And as always, why my voice cracking? Thanks for watching.